The name of this song by Julia Brennan is Inner Demons. And uh, I really like it because I think we've all struggled with inner demons at times. For some of us, our, our demons are worse than others, you know. And things we don't like to talk about, things we don't like to share. Um, for me, growing up, <laughs> there was a period of time in my life where I was molested for several years. And, uh, you know, it, it left me with some inner demons and scars. Demons of sexual morality, demons of bitterness and anger and hatred and unforgiveness. And, uh, you know, our demons are, are different. But, um, the question is, you know, how, in, in the struggle against these inner demons, how do we cope with them? What's, what's our coping mechanism? I mean, you know, I tried drugs, you know, I tried drinking, I tried one night stands and sexually immoral relationships. I tried all kinds of ways to, to deal with my inner demons. But for me, the thing I always wanted was, was love. And, uh, you know, that was, that was kind of ruined for me. And it kind of left my mind twisted and thinking that, you know, that I wasn't worthy of love or they couldn't get love from someone in a pure way that I had to somehow, you know, defile myself or give my body away uh, or that person wouldn't love me. And uh, just thinking that, you know, I, I couldn't have anybody love me, just, just love me for who I am. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I tried lots of different ways. And I'm, I'm not here to try to sell you Jesus like a used car salesman. I'm not going to tell you that all your problems will go away and he's like a genie in a bottle. Because that's just not true. Um, and I've heard some people say that. Some people say, well, you know, your, your God is just a coping mechanism. Well, maybe so, you know, at least to them. But you know, he sure beats the other coping mechanisms I tried. Injuring myself and suicide and <laughs> drinking and drugs and uh, all kinds of disgusting, you know, relationships and things that I... The point is, I, I guess, yes. You know, maybe if, if you want to say that, if you want to say that that's all my God is, okay, but... But to me, he's much more than that. To me, Jesus is more than a coping mechanism. He's the best friend that I always wanted and never had. He's the lover of my soul. He's, he's the lover that I always wanted and never had. He loves me purely. He restores my innocence to me, makes me feel like a child again. Makes me feel like a virgin again. He, he gave back to me what was stolen, what was taken from me. And, uh, you know, just the, the feeling of love, the feeling of joy I get from him. So that's, that's how I deal with my inner demons. I, I listen to the words of Jesus. And Jesus says, you know, if you're weary, if you're burdened, if you're struggling with inner demons, come to me. Lay your burdens down and come to me. Lay them at my feet and take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is light. And so I did. I laid my burdens down at the feet of Jesus. The Bible says he cares for us. He really does. Is that so hard to believe? That the God of the universe cares for us? He does. I've known people with some serious inner demons. A good friend of mine, she struggled with cocaine addiction for 10 years. And uh, ended up in a coma, overdosed. And while she was in a coma, she said Jesus came to her. And, you know, in that dreamlike state, whatever it is that you see when you're in a coma. And he reached his hand out to her and he said, are you done? And she took his hand and when she did, she came out of the coma. And she gave her heart to him and she never went back to cocaine. She's been clean for almost 10 years. So she was an addict for 10 years and she's been clean for almost 10 years. I've known people that have been involved in, in really bad things, you know, gangs, um, no, there's a guy here named Russ, he used to sell drugs and he was involved in all kinds of gangs and I ran with some really bad people. 
And when I was in Baltimore, I, I know a man named Tony Bell. Same thing, you know, he, he served time for selling crack. These were some hardcore people, and yet they gave their hearts to Jesus, and Jesus turned their life around. They had some serious inner demons. There's a girl here in Daytona named Dawn, used to be a prostitute, and now she has a ministry reaching out to prostitutes. She had to fight some inner demons. The Apostle Paul, before he became the Apostle Paul, he was a murderer. He used to go around persecuting Christians, murdering Christians. And yet, once he was transformed by the grace of God, he ended up writing half the New Testament. And so, you know, what is my point? My point is it's, it's not about what we've done. It's about what Jesus did. It's, it's not about how big our inner demons are. It's about how big our God is, who can set us free, you know? It's, it's not something we can do in our own strength. I, I don't believe so, my friend. I tried. So many people have tried. But the night that I came to Jesus and gave him my heart, that's when he finally helped me lick some of those inner demons. Sometimes they come back, you know? Sometimes I still struggle. But when I do, when there's like a thorn in my side with these inner demons, Jesus tells me the same thing he told Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so when I fall off the horse, I get back up and I dust myself off and I get right back in the saddle. Because it's not about what I've done. It's about what he's done. You know, we've been saved by grace through faith. That's not of ourselves. It's not of works. But it's a gift of God. I just want to encourage you, you know. I'm not trying to shove religion down your throat because I don't really follow a religion. A lot of things I believe would make religious people very angry. <laughs> a lot of the people I hang out with Boy, they would look down their nose at me and judge me and reject me and, and cast me out. But they did the same thing to Jesus, the Pharisees, the religious people of his day. That was their main criticism of him. They said, well, Jesus is a friend of sinners. He eats with prostitutes and tax collectors, and he's a glutton and a drunkard. They said all kinds of horrible things about him. But if you ever read Matthew chapter 23... Jesus said a few angry things about them, too. Matter of fact, the, the angriest he ever got was at the religious, the religious folks. Those are the ones who really ticked him off. If you read Matthew, if you read Matthew chapter 23, um, that's, that's the angry Jesus chapter. And notice who he was angry at, religious folks. <laughs> so all I want to tell you, my friend, is I, I don't know who, what your inner demons are. These may be things you've struggled with all your life. Maybe things you want to keep hidden. I don't enjoy telling people about my demons. They're, they're shameful things to me, but, you know, sometimes when you can open up and talk about it, it helps. And, uh, and I'm here to tell you there's this one person who can help you with that demon problem. <laughs> His name is Jesus, and they fear him. They don't fear us, but they fear him. When, when he stands before them, they cry out in fear. Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? They respect him. They don't respect us, but they respect him. And they fear him. And he's the one person who can set us free from his inner demons. So if you want to be free of them, if you'd like to be, get rid of that monkey on your back that's been riding on your back all your life, then uh, I just want you to know Jesus is here to help you. And it only takes a prayer. If you don't know, all you got to do is pray. I'm going to pray a quick prayer, and if you want to, if you want to know Jesus, if you want to get rid of those inner demons and that monkey on your back, pray with me. Heavenly Father, I come before you now in the name of Jesus Christ, 
Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me and wash me away. And in the blood of the Lamb that was provided, the, the innocent Lamb of God that was sacrificed on Calvary, Lord, by faith, I believe in what you said, and I believe in you. And you said, if I believe in you, I'll have eternal life, and even though I die, yet shall I live. Lord, I believe you have the power to lick my inner demons, to make them leave. They may not fear me, they may not respect me, but Lord, they fear you, and they respect you. And I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, Cast out these inner demons. Help me overcome these inner demons, Lord. Set me free from these inner demons that have bound me and chained me and kept me in prison all my life. And let me walk out in the glorious freedom and feel the sun on my face free from these inner demons. Lord, take this monkey off my back. Please, Lord, set me free. Set me free. And then come into my heart and be the lover of my soul. Be the best friend I've ever had. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray, please. Oh, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for making me a new creature free in your glorious freedom in Jesus name I pray Amen if you prayed that prayer welcome to the family of God <laughs> yeah Jesus will be your best friend he'll talk to you if you listen to him I don't mean an audible voice, but there's a voice inside your mind, inside your heart, if you will, your soul, and it's not your own voice. You'll know when you hear it. It doesn't sound like your voice. It sounds different. And it won't tell you to do bad things like your inner demons do. Your inner demons are always telling you to do the bad things. No, no, no. This will tell you to do kind things, good things. It tells you to love and to forgive and to embrace joy. And uh, it, it sets you free. It makes you feel lighter, not heavier. It's, it's light and, and not darkness. And, and you'll, you'll recognize his voice when you hear it. If you ask him in your heart, he'll start to speak to you in your mind, in, in your heart. And you can read his word. Um, we have his word, the Bible. And uh, if you want to get to know Jesus, you should read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read those books first. The other books are good too, but the reason I say read those first, those are biographies of the life of Jesus. Those are the actual words he said. So they carry the heaviest weight out of any other book in the Bible because they are the gospel, the essential gospel and teaching. The heart and mind and soul of Jesus Christ is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And those words are red ink. And so I would read those books first. And you'll get to know Jesus. And he's amazing. Wow. Nobody ever said the things that he said. I fell in love with his words. And uh, he set me free from so many inner demons. And when they come back to try to scare me or, or put the chains on me again and bind me, I cry out to him, and when I fall and when I mess up, I cry out to him, and I come to him in tears, and you know, he takes me back every time in a loving, kind-hearted way. He cleans me up and washes my sins away, and he puts his arms around me and he embraces me, and, and I find myself getting freer and freer and freer. and. Uh, you know, I don't even want the things I used to want. 
my, my appetites, my desires, my dreams have changed because Jesus has changed me. And uh, I don't know. It's a great song. I love this, this Julia Brennan song. It's a good message. And the person who sets me free of my inner demons every day, his name is Jesus. And he can set you free too.